In a previous video, we were looking at the impact of changes in earnings before interest and taxes on earnings per share for a firm when they use different capital structures, that is, different amounts of debt and equity to finance the firm. And if you haven't seen it, you may want to check out the first video I created, which was entitled uh, Capital Structure EBIT EPS Analysis. But let's just recap this example, which comes from Essentials of Corporate Finance by Ross, Westerfield, and Jordan. Currently, the firm has $8 million in assets and is not using any debt. So it's all equity financed, and you can see that they have $8 million in equity. The debt equity ratio is zero because they're not using any debt. And the share price is $20 per share. They have 400,000 shares outstanding. If you take the $20 times the 400,000, you'll get $8 million in equity. And we're going to assume an interest rate of 10%. What they're doing is they're proposing to refinance the firm with half debt. So they're going to have $4 million in debt and $4 million in equity, and which means they're going to have a debt equity ratio of 1. Right, four million divided by four million. The price per share is still twenty dollars a share, but now they have half as many shares. So if you take the twenty times the two hundred thousand, you get four million dollars in equity. And again, the interest rate is still ten percent. So how did this work out? From the previous example we saw, how things worked out depended on what EBIT was and whether you use debt or not in your capital structure. In the first panel of this table, we're assuming no debt. And let's look at the expected case. They're expecting to earn a million dollars in earnings before interest and taxes. There's no interest here, and we assume there's no taxes here either. So their net income is one million. Return on equity is going to be the one million in net income divided by the amount of equity, which is eight million. So a million divided by eight million is 12.5%. Earnings per share will be 1 million divided by the number of shares. There happen to be 400,000 shares, so it's $2.50. Now, suppose there's a recession and EBIT is only 500,000. In this case, you'll notice they earned half the EBIT. And if you work through the numbers, return on equity, 500,000 divided by the 8 million is now 6 and a quarter percent. It's half of what it was before. You earn half the EBIT, you have half the return on equity. Earnings per share, 500,000 divided by the 400,000 shares, turns out to be $1.25. So again, half the, half the EBIT, half the EPS. If the economy is very good and they have EBIT of 1.5 million, you can see this is 50% higher you can see that return on equity is 50% higher and EPS is 50% higher. It goes from 250 to 375. Okay, so no leverage, EBIT and EPS move the same amount. EPS goes up or EBIT goes up by 50%, EPS goes up by 50%. E EBIT goes down by 50%, EPS goes down by 50%. When you use debt, it magnifies your gains and your losses. So again, if we look at the expected case, one million in EBIT, now there's going to be $400,000 in interest. Remember, you're using $4 million in debt at 10%, that's 400,000. Net income will be 600,000, it's lower, but remember, you have less shares now. The return on equity is gonna be 600,000 divided by 4 million because you're only using four million in equity and that's going to be 15%. So you see, see that you have a higher return on equity here than you do here if you use debt to finance the firm. EPS, 600,000 divided by 200,000 shares. Remember, you only have half as many shares. Again, that goes up. So you can see how using debt magnified the return on equity as well as the EPS. What happens if things don't work out as well? EBIT goes down by 50% to 500,000. Now you only have 100,000 in net income. 
your return on equity is going to be a hundred thousand divided by four million it's two and a half percent so instead of falling by fifty percent here you can see it fell by a lot more it went from fifteen percent to two and a half percent how about earnings per share earnings per share are going to be a hundred thousand divided by two hundred thousand so it's going to be fifty cents so that's a much bigger drop than fifty percent right fifty percent would be a dollar fifty so it went from three dollars to fifty cents if things go up what happens well you still have you have one and a half million in EBIT you have four hundred thousand dollars in interest you have net income of one point one million your return on equity is going to be one point one million divided by four million or twenty seven and a half percent and your earnings per share are going to be 550 so this went up by 50 percent but this went up by more than 50 percent this went up by more than 50 percent 50 percent increase over three dollars would be 550 the big question is is does this actually matter and Modigliani and Miller worked it out that it didn't really matter in fact uh, it didn't matter because you could create your own leverage if you, if the firm wasn't using leverage so here's the example they give this is uh, the proposed capital structure where they're using four million in debt and four million in equity earnings per share fifty cents three dollars and five fifty and you can check that out on the previous table and they're going to assume you have a hundred shares of stock okay so so your earnings are going to be fifty dollars three hundred dollars and five fifty just multiply a hundred times the EPS net cost hundred shares at twenty dollars cost you two thousand dollars now suppose you have the original capital structure but you create your own leverage the original EPS using no leverage was a dollar twenty five two fifty and three seventy five what we're going to assume is that you're going to borrow money so that you can buy twice as many shares so now you're going to have 200 shares your 200 shares so what's your earnings for 200 shares going to be 200 times a dollar 25 250 here 200 times 250 here 500 and 750 here but because you borrowed you borrowed two thousand dollars you bought uh, an extra hundred shares at twenty dollars a share that's two thousand dollars you have to pay two hundred dollars in interest and look what your net earnings are after you subtract out the interest fifty dollars same as here three hundred dollars same as here five fifty the same as here what's your net cost two hundred shares at twenty dollars a share minus the borrowed amount so you had four thousand dollars in stock minus two thousand dollars so you still have two thousand so what happens here what Modigliani and Miller showed is that it doesn't actually matter you can create your own leverage so if a firm is not using leverage and you would like them to you can just create your own leverage by borrowing money and buying additional shares of the stock what if the firm is using leverage and you don't like them using leverage? Well, you can do the opposite. You can unlever your portfolio. And here's the case where the firm is using the proposed structure. So we know that EPS is 50 cents in a recession, $3 in the expected case, and 550 in the expansion case. Instead of, instead of buying more shares, we're going to buy half the number of shares and we're going to put half the money in bonds so let's see what we have here we have 50 shares instead of 100 shares so 50 times the 50 cents is 25 dollars 50 times the three dollars is dollar fifty 150 and then we have 275 over here now what you've done is you've taken that extra money and you've bought the company's bonds so you've bought a thousand dollars worth of bonds instead of buying two thousand dollars worth of stock you only bought a thousand dollars worth of stock twenty dollars times fifty dollars fifty shares 
So you take that extra thousand dollars, you buy the company's bonds, you're going to earn 10% on those bonds, so you're going to earn $100 in each case, and lo and behold, you get 125 here, 250 here, and 375 here, and that turns out to be the case that in the unleveraged uh, example, that's exactly what you get. So what Modigliani and Miller showed was that under certain assumptions, there are no taxes in this assumption, you can actually, uh, the capital structure of a firm just really doesn't matter. That if you don't like them using leverage, you can unlever. If you want to use them to use leverage and they choose not to, you can use leverage yourself to buy the stock. So the value of the firm shouldn't change at all whether they use leverage or not.